What even is fashion? Is this fashion? This? This is definitely fashion or my name isn't fashion lover for- Let's be honest, most people don't care about fashion. Most people dress like one of these. Yes, Choose your sir. class. Yeah. But then why do we see so many clothes regarded as fashion like this? This is a sculpture. How is this clothing? This is the same show that featured the Minecraft hoodie and balloon shoes. Didn't you know? Balloons are popping off this season. Remember the condom challenge? Yeah, most of us left that in 2013. But not everyone was so lucky. You merely adopted the condom. I was born in it. There is no possible way that something like your work uniform could be fat. Fast food employees outraged over Moschino's McDonald's inspired collection. As if fast food employees weren't mocked enough. Imagine going to McDonald's dressed like this. How can you be so fashionable? Sexy Spongebob anyone? Genuinely though, I actually really dislike Moschino. I hate all of this. Gigi Hadid sucking on a baby bottle. Moschino was ahead of its time with this one. This is, this is actually kind of cool. I wouldn't mind having a friend looking over my shoulder. A lot of this stuff is weird. And sometimes as someone who is into fashion, see the name, I'm not number one, but I am up there. I feel like regular folk seem to think that us fashion people don't see it or that the designers themselves are painfully unaware. And you know what? Sometimes they are, see Balenciaga. I agree. I think this looks stupid as well, but I'm sure there's something more to it. Some meaning or reason behind it because art and fashion overlap. Fashion can be a form of artistic and practical design. Oh, uh... However, even if the meaning behind this is really thought provoking, I still think this looks ridiculous. But wait a second, I have another point that I'm about to make right now. Maybe it looking ridiculous is a part of it. I'm sure the designer behind these looks wasn't behind the curtains before the show panicking because someone was like, hey, those kind of look like giant condoms, man. And then the designer was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Why did nobody tell me? I'm gonna be the condom guy, what have I done? I'm sure the condom guy is doing just fine. Happy with all the exposure that it's got, which now may help him get a job in fashion, designing things that are a little less extreme. People are gonna negatively judge things they don't understand, right? Whatever. Watches. 60,000 to tell the time in style. Ever heard of a sundial? That is the most old school thing you can do. Let me let me show you a couple of really weird designers and try to understand their work, not just call their creations condoms. What? Yeah, by the way, I'm using a green screen. I'm ready for all the frugal aesthetic comparisons. Have you seen my room? It's terrible. I could clean it up or I could get a green screen and deal with a couple of frugal aesthetic comparisons. Let's go deep straight away and talk about the work of Sruly Wrecked. Technically, he is a designer with a background in fashion. He had his own fashion line and even worked for Alexander McQueen back in 2005. While his collections definitely merit praise, I'm going to focus on some of the other products that he's designed that are a little more interesting. In my opinion, nobody merges product design and art like Sruly Wrecked. You want an example? Skin ring. That's right, Scring. Mr. Wrecked. <laughs> Mr. Wrecked had a slice of skin surgically removed from his belly. The top layer was separated from the bottom layers. It was tanned and salted, then mounted on a 24 karat gold band. It was apparently up for purchase for 350,000 euro. And what I want to know is where is it? I couldn't find anything about it being bought. So where is the OG Scring? Is it, is it missing? Was it destroyed in a certain mountain? I want to know because I got one of these rings off quality reps and everyone in the comments was telling me it's not going to pass because there's only one. But if we don't know where the original one is, how do you know mine isn't? You can watch him getting the skin cut out of his abdomen here on YouTube. I'm obviously not going to show it, but here's my reaction to it. <laughs> He's, he looks dead. He is definitely regretting this. I can see that. He has to live with this. He's going to have this huge scar. Do you, oh, did you get your appendix taken out? No. <laughs> Long story. Oh my God, they're cutting it. Oh, it's like wrinkles. It's like a little worm. Sruly Rekt has created a host of products for your viewing pleasure and analysis, like gloves made out of the skin of a basking shark with the barbs on the inside of the glove. Because of the direction of the barbs, once the gloves are put on, the wearer cannot remove them again without them getting cut off somehow. A belt made specifically for autoerotic asphyxiation from the skin of an Atlantic white-sided dolphin. Look up autoerotic asphyxiation if you don't know what it is. And if you're interested, this belt comes with a hook that you can easily put onto a door or a handle. AEA made easy. Lastly, I want to highlight the Luxury of Choice series. A collection of 19 objects methodically crafted for the user to perform a voluntary death of their choice. AKA euthanasia, but make it swag. It feels like all these objects are made for shock value, but obviously there's more to them. It's the difficult topics that they cover, which are the shocking parts, not the products themselves. And the use of the rare animal skin kind of adds to the horror of them. The products are designed with an unreserved approach towards the often avoided topics of death, sexual gratification, consumerism, and animal exploitation. Things that everybody faces almost daily in their lives but are 
deliberated about privately. As Cerulli says of most of his work, these products are reactions to these things. To think this video started with sexy Spongebob, huh? I think most of the conclusions that I made about what the products relate to are pretty straightforward. Realistically, we shouldn't be disgusted by one product made of human skin compared to the copious amounts of stuff made with animal skin, literally around us. The Luxury of Choice series deals with the concept of death and how it too can be commodified and turned into something superficial by letting the user choose how they want to die as if it really matters in the end. The belt represents the more uncomfortable side of sexuality and whether there should be a limit to pleasure or should everything be catered to without judgment. Should these dangerous belts be sold next to butt plugs? I don't know, but someone should find out asking for a friend. And the gloves represent the consumerism and materialism in the world today. Now, there are so many objects created and bought today solely for the purpose of being owned and to act as a status symbol. Using the gloves would mean destroying them, which is kind of like taking an action figure out of its vintage box. These are all just my interpretations, of course, so take it with a grain of salt. I imagine these objects belong to a fictional tolerant society where the inhabitants are open around their desires towards these taboo subjects. And so there becomes a demand and these products are the supply. Maybe we shouldn't be so candid about these topics so we don't devolve into that kind of society. Or maybe we all live in that society already in our private lives. Cerulli Rect has too many projects to talk about in one segment of this video. There's more conceptual fashion stuff and a lot of innovative work that doesn't seem to have been expanded on, unfortunately. Like his translucent leather. This leather looks and acts like PVC but has the strong qualities of leather. A much more sustainable material. He has also experimented with mycelium, which is mushroom, so he does offer vegan alternatives. All of his products are very neatly presented on his website. He, he is a designer after all. I recommend you check him out. I think everyone should encounter his work. I think you might learn something about yourself in the process. Who knows? All these products were a while ago. Now he just designs for a whiskey glass brand called Norlin, which he helped found. Maybe his work got a, a bit too much for him. I mean, you really did not look like he enjoyed getting that skin taken out of him. That left a mark. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get back to fashion. That's what I started the whole video with and I veered off almost immediately. Our next designer is someone a bit more up to date, working and thriving today. Michaela Stark. I don't know how I'm going to show those on YouTube without getting demonetized, but I'm sure going to try. If you want to properly experience her work, go check out her Instagram and all these designers' Instagrams linked in the description. If you've never seen her work before, then I'm sure, like this screen, it will be quite shocking to see someone distort their body in such extreme ways. And you're probably going through a series of emotions trying to figure out how to feel about it and maybe fight that initial perception or just embrace it. The female body and all of its forms have been a pretty hotly debated topic since forever. And I'm extremely conservative, so I'm sure you can deduce how I feel about it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I should be sarcastic on YouTube anymore. I, I joked about being 16 in my last video and I got a lot of comments to calling me a really mature 16 year old, which I don't think there is a greater insult. Majority of the reactions I see towards Michaela's work are either extreme positivity or negativity, which I guess makes sense considering her work deals with extremes. Funnily enough, a part of her work is a reaction against the skinny jeans epidemic. She talks about how she went to fashion school when skinny jeans were all the rave. And while she's not at all overweight, she's not the archetypal skinny jeans wearer, but she would wear them as most people do and still do to fit in and they would push her belly up and just make her feel uncomfortable in her body. I know I'm not Michaela's target audience, but it was refreshing to hear that as a guy with big thighs. I felt the exact same way wearing skinny jeans back in the day. And my life goal ever since has been to get as many guys as possible who shouldn't be wearing skinny jeans to burn them. That is why I do what I do today. And it's ironic really, because the same guys who will turn their nose up at this and call it disgusting or whatever, will go out like this, basically revealing their body in an unflattering way in the same way that Michaela is. Wear what you want, I don't really care. I'm just making a point about how quick people will be to judge this just because some skin is showing. In her words, her work explores the issues of body dysmorphia, beauty standards, sexuality, and fetish. It, it just got really hot in here, sorry. She felt excluded from fashion while living in Brisbane because she could never find clothes or lingerie that fit her properly. So her work is, in a sense, anti-fashion. Because her work deals with a lot of nudity, female nudity at that, there is a jump to sexualize it. Of course, this is all my opinion, not fact. There's plenty of ways to look at this, but I think sexualizing it is the wrong way to initially approach this. Because sexuality, in my opinion, is a pretty stubborn characteristic in most people. So frankly, I think most people who see her work are gonna unfairly disregard it at first. I think it's okay to say that I don't find this attractive. Bodies do come in all shapes and sizes, but this is clearly not a realistic representation of most people's bodies. She achieves these looks by pushing herself to the extreme, often hurting herself in the process. I find it fascinating all the different ways that she's able to morph her body. It's very visually interesting. And the shapes that she creates is unique to a body type like hers. Yes, her work is extreme, but it isn't demanding that this become the status quo. It's for the people who feel like they don't fit the status quo. If this person could be so confident in making her body into a literal abstract sculpture, I can see how that could inspire people to be more comfortable in their own bodies. I hope I covered her to work on the topic around it with sensitivity. I understand that me, a little straight white man talking about this stuff may come across in poor taste, but I genuinely like her work a lot. When I first saw it, I was a little put off, but I gave it a chance. And while it may not be for me specifically, 
I think the fact that I can appreciate it shows that it's just great art. She's not the first to tackle preconceived notions around the female body, but I think she does it really effectively, turning her body into a literal art piece. Now, you know whose work I don't like a lot? J.W. Anderson. And not because he's from Northern Ireland and I'm from the Republic of Ireland, but it is a big reason, I won't lie. He's been around for a while, since 2008. And he's someone who's found a great balance between creativity and commercialization. There's no doubt that he's a great designer. And I would say that he made some of the best fashion of the early 2010s, a time that I find physically painful to look back at. He's always been controversial and his shows tend to strike a balance between conceptual and more practical clothing. But he's really been pushing the line with that balance recently at his own brand and at Loewe, which is where most of my beef with him recently has arised. You know, with the skateboard jumpers, Minecraft outfits, soggy grass clothes, and oh, look at that, SpongeBob is making a reappearance. Just stuff like this just sucks. Attaching objects like a load of screens or DVDs to clothes or to anything, like a banana to a wall. It's just the pinnacle of high art snobbery to me. It really doesn't mean anything, and it wouldn't be appreciated if it wasn't done by a famous designer or artist. You thought I was just gonna have nice things to say about all these designers. There's, there's a counter argument to be made for art like this, where being obvious rather than being obscure about what you're trying to express can be considered more honest and direct to the point. There is power and simplicity, but you can still be original with a simple approach. Personally, I like trying to figure it out a bit more, derive my own meaning, and this feels so uninspired that I don't exert more energy to understand it than I think was used to actually think of it. He said before in interviews that he doesn't necessarily put a lot of artistic thought into his work. Sometimes simpler is better and lets the audience interpret his work themselves. So yeah, he likes the simpler approach, which as I said, there is merit in doing. And it has worked for him in the past, but recently I've been finding his work to be a bit lazy and gimmicky. Instead of being impressed, I've been rolling my eyes a bit at some of the stuff he's been presenting at shows. He started his recent Fall Winter 23 show with models walking with a roll of fabric by their side. And I want to know, is it JW Anderson branded? Where can I cop? I'm surprised I haven't seen this on the runway before. I'm sure it has happened because I've had this idea, but I didn't think it was actually that good. So I hold JW Anderson to the same standard that I hold myself to. Make models hold a roll of fabric instead of putting fabric on them. I'm a genius. J.W. Anderson isn't just making art, but also clothes that are meant to be sold. And the other stuff he shows alongside his more conceptual pieces are actually pretty cool. It's important to understand that the conceptual pieces, like the ones I mentioned before, aren't actually being sold in this manner. If you go look at his store, it's the more normal stuff. And the idea behind this methodology of presenting your clothes is that the experimental clothing represents J.W. Anderson's artistic vision. It's pretty much a form of marketing, which is what all fashion is. If you like his more experimental work on his runway, but it isn't necessarily your style, you can still support him and buy into his message by buying a simpler piece, which still stands for J.W. Anderson. However, I just haven't been liking the vision. I saw this Anthurium flower getting a lot of praise at his recent Loewe show. And while it is an impressive piece of craftsmanship, it's just a flower. I'd rather see a real one than a fake big one. And I'll give more credit to the craftspeople that made this than the designer, because it's an exact copy of the flower. It's already been designed. Okay, that's it. That's all I had to show you today. Obviously, I'm not trying to tell you how to feel towards any of these designers, but I hope my explanations and opinions have helped you look at them a bit differently, even if you dislike them more than when you first saw them. Share your thoughts in the comments if you want, and if you have a good point, uh, I'll comment and I'll, I'll give you some praise. There is a lot more to all of the designers that I talked about today, but I don't have the time to go into them to the degree that they deserve. So this week's Patreon video is a continuation into each of these designers. So if, you, if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my Patreon. Men's Fashion Week is ongoing, so you better know I got my review of it coming out next week. Okay, goodbye.